Turn with me this morning to Galatians. We're going to start in Galatians 5.16. Galatians 5.16. <clears throat> but while we're getting started, I want to make a statement. I want to say that if you, if you surrender to joy, you'll live in peace. If you surrender to joy, you'll live in peace. If you, if you surrender to fear, you'll live in turmoil. You'll live in turmoil. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. He teaches us in his word that he needs to restore back to us the joy of our salvation. Amen. Yeah. You know, we've just came through a very difficult time and period coming through all the COVID and the elections and, and all of the news. And, and it was really easy to surrender your joy in the midst of everything that you were seeing and reading and start allowing fear to dictate your choices. But see, that's not what the word says. Amen. So we're going to go through a little bit of this real quick this morning because we want to get to some joy part. How many of you could use a little joy? Yes. Amen. You know, laughter doeth good like a medicine. Amen. But, you know, and unfortunately, there's some things that we have to understand before we can get to the joy. Amen. In 16, it says, I say, then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. All right, that's a pretty simple statement. Amen. Walk in the spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What does it mean to walk in the spirit? Does that mean you put on your Casper the Friendly Ghost sheet? And you walk through the house? Is that what that means? No, what does that mean? It means to walk in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Walking in the spirit means I walk according to the word. Can I get at least one? Amen. Man, we're off to a slow start this morning. But see, if we walk in the spirit, the Bible says that you 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 just might not. Maybe it's possible that you won't fulfill the desire. Is that what it says? It says you what you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What are the lusts of the flesh? Bad stuff. Pride, sin, all of the issues, right? Right? Are you with me this morning? All right, it says you won't fulfill. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. Isn't that amazing? You know, how many of you wake up in the morning and you think, man, praise the Lord. It is a beautiful day, right, Ray? Yes. I'm getting a little feedback up here. Can we turn me down just a little? My wife's been trying to do that for years. Amen. Doesn't work for her. Maybe it will for DJ. Praise the Lord. But you wake up in the morning and, you, and, and now I don't know about you, but Ray, I, I wake up praying. Amen. When I, before I get out of bed in the morning, how many of you lay in the morning and you start just start praying? Wait, and you start praying, Lord, I just love you this morning. And then in your prayer, when you're still laying in bed, which is easy to pray in bed, you're praying for two reasons. One, because you're too lazy to just get up. Right. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Right. And, and, you know, you should start your day in prayer. And so instead of getting up and praying like, you know, that you should, we're just going to lay here for, you know, pray a little bit. But so you're praying, laying in bed and you're praying and you're and you're telling the Lord how wonderful and great he is. And you're saying, Lord, just use me today. Right. Because usually not usually in the mornings, right in the mornings, usually we don't just bombard heaven with how terrible our life is. That comes around. Maybe it's 830. But anyways. But we wake up in the morning, we're usually expressing to God our willingness to serve, our willingness to obey, our will. You understand what I'm saying? You see, that's because at that particular moment in the morning, you're still in tune with your spirit man, right? Because your flesh man is still lazy and laying in bed. But see, the flesh is getting ready to wake up. Now, it's amazing to me how easy it is for us not to understand that the spirit man and the flesh man war against each other. 
Amen. You know when you're little in the cartoons and they always have, come on over here, honey, this is good. Yeah. And, uh, and in the morning, you know, you have that little devil on one shoulder and the little angel on the other shoulder in the cartoons and they're whispering in your ear. No, you shouldn't do that. That's not very nice. And the other one's like, oh, just beat the mess out of them. They deserve it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and then most of us, at the first thing in the morning, we're listening to the spirit man. Oh, <laughs> praise the Lord. You know, it's all unicorns and rainbows. and yeah. Right? Yeah. But see, by about 10 o'clock, usually, now we're listening to this guy. Oh, the next person that opens their mouth. <laughs> The very next one that tells me, pull your mask up over your nose. Oh. Right. <laughs> You'll get that later. Amen. That is true. All of a sudden now, my spirit man is warring against my flesh man. Right? Is it just me? No. I know it's not, but I'm going to be polite. Amen. <laughs> But see, your spirit man is at war against your flesh. Now, whose responsibility is it to keep the flesh in check? Boy, you say that with such emphasis this morning. Isn't that nice? And then later you'll say, well, it's all the Lord's fault. You know, if the Lord didn't want me to, you know, to, to date that woman, he wouldn't have brought her into my life. Right? You know, if God hadn't wanted me to fall in love with that man, then I should have never met him. It's all God's fault. Really? Man, that's a new color of stupid we haven't really discovered yet. Because that's the spirit man at war with the flesh. Amen? Amen. Because, see, your flesh is always looking at what feels good, looks good, and tastes good. And most of us, listen to me, most of us constantly surrender to the feeling and not to the experience. You see, your spirit man wants to save you bad experiences. But we like the experiences of the flesh because for, now listen, the Bible says that sin is fun for a season. You know, it's okay and it's fun for it, but there's always a price to be paid. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So let's quit paying the price for sin and enjoy the joy yeah. of salvation. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. All right. Now listen, he says, so that you know the things that you wish. Basically, you know, it's like, you know the right thing to do, right? But the thing, even the Apostle Paul wrote, the thing that I know that I should do is not the thing that I shouldn't, or should do. Right? You get it, right? I mean, you know what I mean. There's a whole, you know, I think I should do it, but no, I'm not going to do it, but I really should do it. But yeah, I should, but no, I ain't going to do it. But yeah, I should do it. Right? And this goes on in your head like this and like this and like this. Oh, you know, it's like, now listen to me, late at night in that last piece of chocolate cake. Oh, I know I shouldn't. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> Amen. And even if you really don't like chocolate cake, as soon as you decide you're not going to eat chocolate cake, what do you want more than anything else? Chocolate cake. I mean, listen, how many of you have ever been in the McDonald's drive through? All right. Now, listen, and you're getting and you're getting ready to order and you're like, OK, I'm going to get a salad and a water. A salad and a water because I know that's what I need. I'm going to get a salad. And that little voice comes on the speaker. Would you like to try a Big Mac today with a Biggie Fries? Yeah, I'll have a Big Mac, uh, Biggie Fries, and a large Coke. And a salad and a water. <laughs> See, that's your spirit man at war with your flesh. Amen. Because, see, your, 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 now come on, your flesh wants a Big Mac. Oh, just the way that you want it, right? 
Oh, with extra mac sauce. Yeah. Or let's do in and out. Come on now. Yeah. Double, yeah. double yeah. with animal. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> That's a man's burger there. Yeah. Right? Or, or not for the weak of heart, a four by four. Yeah. But your, your spirit man is telling you, listen, listen, you better just eat the lettuce. <laughs> but see, we know the right thing to do, but we don't do it. You see, we choose, we choose to surrender constantly to the desires of the flesh and forsaking the spirit man. You see, we got to get into the habit of practicing and doing it on the small things. Listen, you know, we say it in joking and laughing, but, but, but you need to understand this. If you can't listen to the spirit man in the McDonald's drive through <laughs> how are you going to listen to the spirit man in the emergency hospital? How are you going to listen to your spirit man when crisis really comes? When, when you really need to make the choice not to succumb to the worries of the flesh and stand in the faith of the promise. Amen? Amen? Boy, it gets quiet quick, don't it? It says, but listen, if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are... All right, I want you to go ahead and get your marker and just cross those off now, okay? We're just going to scribble that part out in the word and we're going to skip, right? No, we're not. Come on now. It says, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry. You, you know, we're going to stop here for a minute. The others are pretty self-explanatory, right? Everybody knows what adultery is, right? Come on now. Everybody's like, hmm. <laughs> Fornication, we all know what fornication is, right? You know, you might have to explain it to a 10-year-old, but, you know, by the time you're 16, you usually got that figured out, amen? <laughs> Lewdness, we understand. Uncleanness, we understand those things. But when we get to adultery, a lot of us can get confused a little bit about adultery, right? Especially in this day and age. Because when somebody talks about adultery, what's the first thing you think of? <laughs> Idols, right? You know, little gold or wood, you know, things. <laughs> Like, you know, Buddha, you know, a little Buddha belly rub them. Yeah, but yeah. But, uh, <laughs> later, we charge a buck for rub for luck. Okay, come on. Ah, <laughs> oh, that ain't right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ray. Love you, buddy. You ain't sorry, Ray. Um, no. Ray, I love you, Ray. <laughs> and then where was I at? Oh, idolatry. <laughs> you see, we, we get confused at times about idolatry because we, we automatically think in Old Testament thinking. And so we think, well, sh I don't worship no idols. Really? Yeah. Really? You understand, now listen to me, an idol, idol, idolatry, is anything that you think of more than you think of God. Oh, man, now, Pastor, I mean, you're just getting ugly now. Because, see, now, listen, idolatry could be your job. Idolatry could be your church. Idolatry could be your spouse or your children. It could be, for, for some of you, it could be your car. And for some of you, you maybe you should get a new car. <laughs> but, you, you know, we, we have to be careful because... Idolatry can be anything that you substitute your worship to. And so idolatry could be a list of a many different things in your life. Money could be your God that you worship. It could be honor, prestige. It could be position. You see what I'm saying? So my best advice to you is you need to get before the presence of the Lord and ask him. God, is there anything in my life that I place above you? Because we have this innate ability to make excuses for the sin in our life and justify it through the pretense of religion. 
Well, I thought it was funny. You see, we make excuses for life. The presence of the Father and say, Lord, sweep out every crack, clean the Father, because the price that I need to pay in order to surrender my carnal, my nature to you, to live under the Spirit, pales in comparison to the reward that you want to give me for doing so. Amen. 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 All right, so idolatry, sorcery. Well, we really don't have, you know, issue with sorcery. Oh, but this next one, hatred. Hmm. You realize and understand that in the Christian life, hatred has no place. Amen. You know, the Bible says if you can't forgive your brother, then how is it going to forgive you? You guys remember reading the word somewhere? But around with this bitterness and this hatred, and it's, and it's geared towards somebody who might have offended you, you know, 20 years ago. And, and, and you still have this deep-rooted, uh, it's a hatred, a bitterness and a hatred. And for some of you, you can't even remember really w what it was about. You know, I don't remember why I hate you. But I know I hate you. <laughs> I looked up who to hate in the dictionary, and your picture was there. <laughs> You're the one. Bless God. But see, listen, hatred has no place in the Christian experience. You, you know, and, and, and people, we, we like to say this. I've had people tell this. Well, they don't deserve my forgiveness. They don't deserve my forgiveness. Oh, really? Like you deserved forgiveness at all. More important than that, listen to me, forgiveness isn't about them. It's about me. It's about you. It's what it does to you. It separates you from where you should be spiritually. Now, and my Bible says you, you won't inherit the kingdom is what it says. And people say, well, how about grace, pastor? Well, how about this? Let's not try our luck. <laughs> what do you think about that? If the Bible said that if I don't forgive, I might not inherit the kingdom, I might want to forgive. <laughs> and not think, well, I'm going to hate you and your grace is grace is going to cover. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you see the flaw just a little bit in that mindset? Yeah. Why risk? Why risk it? Especially when, when you're the one, you're the one that's suffering, not them. You're the one that has surrendered your joy, which surrendered your peace. You're the one that's going to deal with the actual physical health challenges that come from harboring bitterness and hate. It manifests itself in your body in all kinds of ways that aren't fun. You know, growing old is not for sissies. Just regular, amen? But when you're harboring a bunch of issues and challenges and stuff, it, it amplifies the issues already that you have with your body. All right. Well, I kind of liked it. I don't know what y'all are doing, but that's okay. All right. Hatred, contentious jealousies. Jealousies. Really? Are you not secure in who you are in Jesus? Yes. Didn't he say in his word that you and him, you're the majority? Then what kind of petty jealousy do you need to worry about? Amen. You, you know, I've, I've been in church services before where there was such jealousy about somebody else's relationship with somebody else. Couldn't enjoy it. Did you see that? The way that they came in and they sat down right next to the pastor? <laughs> You know what? The difference between me and most pastors, most people don't want to get too close to me because I pick on you from the pulpit. <laughs> 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 
Amen. No hatred. <laughs> so I don't really have that challenge here, amen. But you know, jealousies of position and jealousies of people's lives. And, and then if, if we're not careful, we get jealous when God's blessing somebody else. Amen. You, you know, in, in the church over the years, I know a lot of people who's God's blessed them with nice things. And even in the church, they're so afraid to drive their new car to the church because they're afraid of the jealousy and the remarks that they're going to get from people that come from church. Amen. What is wrong with this picture? Listen, if you drive a beautiful, nice car, congratulations. Good for you. Your priorities are enough in line that the Lord's blessing you as far as I'm concerned. That's a great thing. And if he blesses you that much, why don't you buy me one too? I'll drive it to church. I don't have a problem. But I know people who won't share the blessings of the Lord because they're afraid of the jealousy that they will see from members of the church. Listen, in this church, we don't care how much money you make. We don't care what kind of car you drive. We don't care the house that you live in. That's not relevant. We come here to worship. We come here to get into the presence of the Lord. And when God blesses you, I'm excited for you. When you get to move from one level to the next and God pours out into your life because of the sacrifice that you've made, I'm excited for you. How about this? How about instead of getting jealous because, you, you know, somebody driving a new car, we say, Lord, I'm ready to surrender all that I have to you so you can bless me with something better. Amen. But see, most of you try to hang on so tight to what little you have because you have this illusion of control that you're not willing to give up what you got in your hand for what God's holding back over here. Amen. And it'll manifest itself in jealousy because you are jealous because somebody's getting what you want in life because you're not willing to surrender what it takes to get what they have. Amen. 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 Man, that's a good word this morning. Now, listen to me. Here's the next one. Now, ooh. Are we working on our joy yet? We're getting there. We're getting there. All right. Outbursts of wrath. <laughs> All right. Might as well just close the book now. Amen. Outbursts of wrath. What does that mean? That means how many of you, you know, get the mindset that, oh, really? Who do you think you are? Oh, I was talking with someone the other day. They were so rude. Somebody needed to put them in their place. And I was just the person there. Oh, mm. I gave them a piece of my mind. <laughs> That's not what it said. It said we're not supposed to do that. We're not supposed to be subject to outbursts of wrath. <laughs> How difficult is that? And, and, and see, listen, here's the challenge. Once you've already been put on edge, once you've already surrendered your joy, once you're already in a, in a position to surrender to the flesh, right? When the opportunity presents itself to act in a way contrary to what the word says, you've already primed the pump, right? And you primed the pump because you didn't recognize back a few, you know, seconds, minutes, hours, days, some of you years, <laughs> that you needed to surrender that 
to the Lord, get back into praise and worship to get my mind right so I could keep the catalyst from propelling me to an outburst of wrath. I'm speaking from experience. My outbursts of wrath usually come once I've been walking down the road toward it. Right? Very seldom do you go, you know, zero to outbursts of wrath for no apparent reason. Usually, it's really not so much the situation that you're in. It's the accumulation of all of the stuff that you haven't got back under the blood, that you think that you've dealt or dealing with, that all of a sudden it just erupts. And the person usually that it erupts on is the one that you love and care about the most. Isn't it amazing how that works? You know, hurting people hurt people. You have to surrender before we get to the explosion. See, the Bible says that we're not supposed to subject ourselves to outbursts of wrath. But some of you, you know, outbursts of wrath for you are kind of like vitamins. You know, they're at least once a day. Amen. You, you need a new vitamin. It's called Jesus. Outbursts of wrath. And then as we're reading on selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, Murderers, praise the Lord, we don't really deal with that, amen. Drunkenness, you know. <laughs> praise the Lord, we don't deal with that. Drunkenness, amen. <laughs> you know, everything that pops in your mind shouldn't come out your mouth, amen. <laughs> reveries and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past. Now, listen, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Hmm. Now, now we just read the same Bible, right? Is, did you say the same thing? We just went through a, a handful of lists and it says those that practice. What does it mean to practice something? That means you're doing it on a continual, you understand what I'm saying? Because there's a difference between the oops theory in your life, right? Yeah. How many of you are perfect? Well, I had a couple liars in here, but yeah. <laughs> but none of us are perfect, that's for you. And, uh, but all of us, the Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, right? That's what the Bible says. But there's a difference between falling short and practicing. Yeah. Now, we just read in the word, it said, those that practice these things shall not inherit the kingdom. So let me ask you, what does that mean? It says, those that practice shall not inherit the kingdom. What does it mean to inherit the kingdom? That's kind of interesting, huh? Kind of heavy, kind of harsh. Because then, then, you know, well, well, Pastor, where does grace play into that? Well, grace plays into it every day of your life. But see, don't mistake grace for acceptance. Don't mistake grace for, it, for, for your, your ticket. Jesus is the ticket. You see, grace is not the okay to act in those ways. Grace is the okay, even though I'm acting in those ways, I'm striving to do better. There's a difference between practicing and admitting a challenge and trying to change and get better. Amen? Are you understanding? Because I do not want you to not make heaven because you've practiced some of those, right? So my best advice to you is surrender it to the Lord. You, you know, no matter what it is you're facing today, if, it, if it's on the list that we just read through, His grace is sufficient to lead you out of and back to joy. Amen? We need to learn to move that way. But it says, but listen, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. 
Love, joy, peace. Those are the first right off the bat. Fruits of the Spirit. What are the fruits of the Spirit? What does it mean to be a fruit of the Spirit? That means that those things are produced in your life. See, if your spirit man is running your life, then these should be the fruit. Are you with me? It says that the fruit of the Spirit, you are, you are what we're talking about. You are what the Bible is speaking. It's saying the fruit of the Spirit, it ought to be the start, love, joy, peace. Jesus said, You'll know my disciples by their love. Love should be the first fruit. It should be the first that exudes from your life. People should be attracted to you like they were Jesus because of the love. That love, that love, listen, surrenders you to joy. You know what the difference between joy and happiness is? Happiness is an emotion based on the moment. Joy is a deep rooted. Joy is deep. Joy comes from deep down inside, knowing that in spite of adverse circumstance or situation that might have you perplexed, troubled at the moment, we're still at joy deep in because we're at peace with the Spirit. But see, joy is expressed out of love. Love, joy, peace. Peace. If there was one thing that you could have in your life above everything else, wouldn't it be great if it was just peace? Amen. Just peace. You, you know, just peace knowing all is well. Just peace knowing in spite of what the doctor said is going to be okay. Just peace knowing that in spite of whatever way my children, my loved ones, my spouse, whatever way they're acting or behaving or struggling with, I know that I know that I know that my God is able. Amen. And I know that I know that peace will reign big. That through His joy and His love that Jesus will make a way. Amen? You see, if we'll surrender just to joy, the peace will come. And if you'll surrender to peace, the joy will come. And if you live your life based in love, in love, joy and peace will overtake you. Amen. 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 You see, we get so caught up in the things of the flesh, in our own selfish ambitions, in our own desires, we get so caught up in the circumstances that we're facing that we'll surrender our joy. And in surrendering your joy, you surrender your peace. And then when you surrender your peace, that's when we fall into those sins that we described earlier. The idolatry, outburst of wrath, drunkenness, and these issues. Those manifest themselves out of a lack of hope in your life because you're no longer standing in faith. You're no longer standing in faith. You've passed standing in faith to where you're not even anymore standing in hope. Now that you're in just a state of panic and fear, we succumb to the natural, to what we know, to numb, right? See, listen to me. Everybody needs an escape. Everybody needs an escape. Your escape is either Jesus or it's things of the world. It's Jesus or it's things of the world. Amen. You know, I like country music and there's a song out, Drugs or Jesus, in country music. And the first time I, he I heard that song, Drugs or Jesus, it kind of made me laugh, in all honesty. But then the more I really thought about it, the more I thought, you know, that's really revelation knowledge. Because we all need an escape. You see, life is going to get you to a point at some time, you have to have some place to go. You have to have an outlet, a place of surrender. And if your place is not Jesus, then it's something else. Amen? 
So how about you make Jesus your surrender? Because, see, if you'll surrender to Jesus, he'll restore back to you your peace. He'll restore back to you your joy. He'll bring back the love. And, and, and now listen, even though the circumstance doesn't change, where there is love, joy, and peace, the circumstance is tolerable. Amen? You can live through whatever you're experiencing if you'll stand in faith in the joy in the presence of the Lord, believing, knowing, and understanding that no matter what, it is well. It is well. It is well with my soul. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand.